Welcome, I'm Brian Hayes. I'm a Salesforce consultant and trainer with Rotiv. In this video, I'm gonna explain what a Salesforce sandbox is, the two main types of sandboxes, and when you'd wanna use one. So a sandbox is a copy of your production org. And your production org is the Salesforce instance that you log into every day. It's the one where you're adding new customers and tasks and using chatter to communicate with your colleagues, etc. Sandboxes exist so that you can make changes to your org and test them out in an environment that is not production. Because if you make a lot of changes within production, you could have a bad outcome. It's kind of a risky thing to do. First off, your users might see that something is completely different and then they would get worried about it and bother you about it. Um, or you actually might break something. You might create an automation that updates a bunch of records and then find out that you did something wrong in that flow and you, you made a mistake but it's too late, all of your Salesforce data has been updated as a result. Sandboxes are safer places for you to build out automations, make changes, and then test them before rolling them out to your production org. If you have professional edition or higher, you'll have access to sandboxes. And there's really two categories of sandboxes. One is without data and the other one is with data. So a sandbox is a copy of your metadata. It's a copy of your configuration and your settings within Salesforce. If you have a custom field on the account object, as an example, that will be copied over to your sandbox for you to then build additional things on top of it. But your data is not necessarily going to come along with that metadata. So if you have an account record for Rose Apothecary, as an example, or Coca-Cola or any other company like that, that data might not be in your sandbox. Instead, what you end up getting most of the time is an empty sandbox. It has your settings and configuration, but there's really no data, there are no records in there at all. And that's the standard developer sandbox. Here in the Salesforce documentation, you can see there's a list of the different types of sandboxes here. Developer and Developer Pro are both sandboxes that don't have any of your data in them. And then partial and full sandboxes have some of your data. Well, full sandboxes have all of your data. Partial has a partial amount of your data in it. A full sandbox is really useful. It's great to be able to build something and test it in an environment with a full copy of all of your data. You're decreasing the number of variables between your sandbox environment and your production environment. The thing is though, they're expensive and they don't come with every edition of Salesforce and they're very resource intensive. To duplicate all of that data it takes time, it takes processing power. So it's a lot faster, easier, cheaper just to use a developer sandbox. And even companies that have access to a partial or a full sandbox, they'll use additional developer sandboxes for different teams or different projects that they're working on. To find your sandboxes, go into your Salesforce setup menu and search for sandbox in the quick find area. And you'll find it underneath environments in the menu. Here we've already created a couple sandboxes, but you can click new sandbox to generate a new one, a current copy from the current configuration of your production org. And if you do decide that you'd really like a full or partial copy of your production environment in a sandbox environment, you can contact Salesforce and I'm sure they'd be happy to sell you another one. Let me know if you found this video helpful and if you'd like us to make another one on change sets, which is a feature that allows you to move changes from a sandbox or into a production org. Thanks for watching this one and I'll see you in the next video.